I had an appointment with a doctor here in France, which went terribly. I saw a male doctor in his 50s who I had seen once before, and when I arrived at his office, I was happy. I was smiling and self-assured, ready to get some help. And when I left 15 minutes later, I was frustrated, defeated, and in tears. His bedside manner was atrocious. I left angry about how I was treated and how much it affected me. Okay, so first, I'm sharing this story with you for three reasons. One, I wanna let you know that if you've been on the receiving end of a doctor's bad bedside manner, you're not alone. Number two, I wanna share a lesson, a positive one actually, that came from this whole experience. And number three, I wanna dispel this notion that we hear so often that life in France is perfect, or that French healthcare is amazing and perfect across the board all the time for everyone. And like anywhere, there are bad doctors and doctors having a bad day, they're human too. So I acknowledge that France is not immune to that. So before I continue, let me just make this clear, this bad experience that I'm sharing, it's not indicative of French healthcare as a whole. I've had plenty of good experiences in France, just like I've had in the US. So it's not a statement about French healthcare as a whole or a dig on France or anything like that. You know, terrible bedside manner can happen everywhere. So this is not a story about how this only exists in France, but you know, for now I exist only in France. This is where I live, where I get medical care. And this happened to me here. So I want to share that with you. And of course there are old school doctors with huge egos in every country who don't want to be asked to explain themselves and don't want to be questioned, especially not by younger women who want to advocate for their health. So to make a long story shorter, I used to get exercise induced headaches about half the time when I do really high intensity exercise, especially in the heat. And the problem is, is better now. This is a story from a little while ago. I have distance now from it, but I just wanted to rule out anything serious at the time and, and just see if the doctor had a solution for me. And I also had a few other things on my mind that in retrospect were from the anticipatory grief and stress and anxiety that comes with having a parent with a terminal illness but he didn't know any of that because he didn't take two minutes to ask any follow-up questions to help round out his diagnosis. So there I was, I explained why I was there about the, the headaches and without asking me any follow-up questions beyond my short explanation, the doctor exclaims, oh, pff, oh, bah oui, uh, bien sûr, uh, you have exercise induced migraines, end of story. And I was kind of like, uh, okay. Um, and he said, I could either stop working out. Well, that's not going to happen. Or I could take medicine, but no big deal. Don't worry about it. It wasn't serious for him and didn't warrant any further discussion. Case closed. And I was a little confused at how he arrived at a diagnosis so quickly without getting any details or looking at other symptoms or reviewing my history. So I calmly asked him if there was a need to check electrolytes, check minerals, do any blood work, see a specialist. You know, as I often do, I did my research ahead of time and I wanted to be as educated as possible as to not waste his time. So I came prepared, right? And I was coming from a place of wanting to understand and I've always been a strong advocate for myself and others, especially when it comes to healthcare. So when I asked him like, how did you come to that diagnosis? You know, he took that personally and things took a turn for the worse. You know, when I asked him to explain that diagnosis and he proceeds to tell me in this huffy voice, you know, he's the doctor and he's been doing this for 30 years and, and he's not sure how it's done in my country, but he's the boss here. And only he decides if I need certain tests. And it was really angry, very unnecessarily dismissive and rude. And really it was borderline yelling. And I was embarrassed by his outburst, how he, how he was reacting to my simple and what I felt was a normal question. I started getting warm and I said, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I, you know, I didn't mean to offend you or question your authority. I completely respect the fact that you're the doctor. Of course, I'm here asking for your help. I'm so sorry. I apologize for any misunderstanding. And I just calmly explained, I was just trying to understand how after 30 seconds, you automatically concluded that I have exercise induced migraines without investigating anything further, like asking me about other symptoms, which I had. I felt it was a bit rushed for him to come to that conclusion. I just wanted to understand, but he didn't like explaining himself. Um, and to spare you the details of the rest of that pretty much useless conversation and his tantrum that went on for far too long, he then told me I was a hypochondriac, that I was worrying about nothing, and that his medical style doesn't mesh well with mine. And I, I was stunned. And 
I did not know what to say. And I'm not very often at a loss for words. You know, he was over the top, nearly yelling. It was totally uncalled for. And then the kicker, he told me not to come back. So I started paying, whatever. I was too worn down and shocked to give him a piece of my mind, which I regret, something I wouldn't even have hesitated in doing back in the USA, at least respectfully, you know, but firmly. And then he held the door open for me, an invitation for me to leave, which I did with tears streaming down my masked face. It, it was bad. And, you know, when we go to the doctor, most of us are looking for help with something. We're in a vulnerable position to some extent because it's, it's the doctor who has the authority over whether or not we're going to get help and how. So it's, it's us, the patient, kind of relying on them, the doctor, to do their job for a diagnosis or medicine or just support and someone who gives you the time of day. And I got none of that. If the doctor had taken two minutes to ask me a little bit of my history and my current life situation, he would have realized I was under extreme stress because of my mom's terminal cancer and the fact that I couldn't visit her due to the raging pandemic at the time. And on that note, just for anyone new here or if you missed some of my other videos my mom did pass away uh, just a few months ago in October here 2021 so yeah even if the doctor thought I was out of line by asking if we should test for anything else or refer me to a specialist which an innocent question I don't think is out of line but even if he did think it was out of line there's a way to professionally speak to someone and what he did wasn't it like in my mind, and again, I'm not a doctor, but I would think you could say something, you know, kind and say, hey, Diane, you know, let's start with some blood work. Tell me more about what's going on in your life right now. I understand you're concerned. This is important to you. And we're going to get this figured out. Okay. And I know you want to do another test and look at this, but you know, let me note your concerns in your chart. And then next week when we follow up, once I have that blood work for a baseline, let's move forward with the next steps then. Um, and then if the blood work has a cause for concern or whatever, you know, we'll go from there. I feel like that's what it the doctor would say to calm a worried patient's mind but there was none of that and now that I've gotten some distance from that joke of a doctor's appointment it's something I laugh at and <laughs> what I do want to say is that my experience at the doctor I feel is a perfect metaphor for how we've all been coping during this pandemic and over the past two years even longer at this point and there's a lesson in there so despite the craziness of the past couple of years I generally wake up happy to start my day pretty much daily I go about my routine and then BAM something happens a thought crosses my mind I remember my mom is no longer here or we see something that reminds us that nothing is normal right now about life and you know that bad news or just that negative thought, it can affect our mood. And maybe we worry or we're just so frustrated by everything in life and we just want to know when things will get better in that moment or in the long term. And I feel like emotions for the past two years, they've been running high for many of us. And then when you have grief on top of that, you know, it's normal to wind up in tears sometimes. And especially when a doctor is horrible to you. You know, we feel overwhelmed and we feel all the feels of the pandemic on top of everything else life throws at us. Now, adapting and rolling with the punches, it comes with the territory of living abroad. We get really quite skilled at being chameleons and listening and learning and going with the flow. But sometimes it would feel really good to just be still and stop adapting. And sometimes I give people the benefit of the doubt and think it's the French way. Like with this doctor, I'm like, wow, is this how it's done? You know, but that wasn't how it's done and that wasn't okay. And, you know, I think back to January 1st, 2020, before the pandemic all started. And I remember the goals I set for myself and how I was cautiously optimistic about starting a new year. Like me kind of walking into that doctor's office that day. You know, I was optimistic that the doctor would be able to help me. So yeah, January 2020, we were smiley, confident, full of hope and self-assured, waiting for that new year and all the promise that comes with it. But you know, then 2021 started and, you know, we can kind of feel more and more defeated depending on what's going on in our lives. And like that doctor's appointment, many of us can't quite find our footing and our sense of calm amid a pandemic. It's a life really where masks are normal and restrictions are just part of our day to day. And I don't have any answers, but I think talking about anxiety and fear and disappointment, they're all vital parts of getting through things either abroad or on your home turf. You know, talking about things gets it out into the ether. It gets it out of your physical body and lets it disperse somewhere else. It doesn't hold you down. That leaves me feeling a little more capable than yesterday. So if that doctor's appointment had happened today, I would not have let him speak to me that way. I would have you know, as professionally and respectfully as possible, told him straight up in a calm manner how out of line he was acting. You know, I'm, I'm stronger now and I know I can 
react and not let people get away with that because that's not me, right? And doctors aren't immune to handling things badly. They're human, right? There are bad doctors with bad days, especially now when stress and anxiety are still running high. But I think we could still be professional and respectful towards other humans, right? Especially with a patient just looking for support. The lesson here is that all we can do is control how we react to the things that unfold in our lives. And that's where the power lies. So in a way, that's how we kind of take back what the pandemic stole from us. I feel like the truth here is that there's always gonna be bad doctors and terrible experiences. We go through things in life, we're all human. But the lesson here for me, one that appears over and over again in my life, is that we can't control others. We can only control our reactions to what happens in our lives. And in that moment with that appointment, I let it affect me too much, both in the moment by not reacting, and that bothered me after, and that's why I was so bothered by this for weeks on end. I didn't like how I was treated, and I didn't like how I failed to react in a way. You know, if someone acts like a fool, that's on them. But we know our bodies best, we need to advocate for ourselves, and if a doctor feels the need to rudely speak down to someone and yell at them, well, I don't think that doctor should be practicing medicine anymore, or they should at least take a time out if they're burnt out. And if you've received downright rude medical care, I'm sending you a virtual hug. Um, I feel when we're already feeling down and we're worried about something, a doctor with poor bedside manner just makes everything worse. It's compounded. So hang in there. That's really all I have for you today. I'd love to know down below in the comments if you've experienced something similar at home or abroad. And if the stress of the pandemic and the anxiety, if it's still affecting you and your loved ones and how you live life. I know restrictions aren't the same everywhere as here in France, so just know you're not alone. I want to send all of you a virtual hug. Take care, everyone. I'll see you back here on We in France soon. Salut. Thank you.